Now I know you wanna have that perfectly smooth, powerful swing, but what if I told you a short, compact swing, one that looks good on camera, makes it impossible to have a smooth swing? I'm gonna talk about why and the right way to get smooth power in this video. Let's go get started. All right, so I'm joined here with Q. He's gonna be reading the flight scope numbers, the radar numbers for me, and let's jump right into it. Let me go ahead and make that short swing and talk about why it's almost impossible to be smooth when you have that short compact swing. So the idea is that if I'm only bringing the club back to where my hands are about shoulder height here and my club is short of parallel, a lot of people really like that idea that if I eliminate kind of degrees of freedom, if I eliminate extra movement in my swing, that's gonna allow me to be more consistent. The problem with that is when I have this short area to accelerate in, I have to be really quick to get any kind of club head speed. Let me make that short swing and try to get some decent distance out of that, see what that would look like. So there, very fast in my swing. I felt like my hands were tighter. I felt like I was really having to muscle it to really get much distance out of that. What were the numbers on that one, Q? So 108 mile per hour club head speed and uh, distance was 285. Okay, so not the worst swing in the world. It probably looked okay, but inside my body, I felt like I would be inconsistent and I would be rushed all the time. Now. What happens if I smoothed out that short swing? So we went from 108 miles an hour. Let's see what I do if I'm smooth and I kind of hit that same position. Let's see what happens to the club head speed. Again, down the middle, a little to the right, but it's actually in the fairway. This is a doggly left hole. Hit it, okay, not too bad, but let's see what my swing speed was. So club head speed went down to 90.4. Uh, total distance was 201.5. Okay, so if I'm making that short swing and I'm smooth, I just don't have time to accelerate the club. If I make that short swing and I wanna hit it far, I really have to accelerate quickly. I get tight with my hands, I get jerky with my swing, and to me, when I made that short swing that went a decent distance, I felt like there's no way I could play that way every day and be consistent, or it'd really be a grind to be consistent. Now, if I do a couple of things, I can really trick my body into being smoother and still have power at the same time. One of the biggest ones that I see is getting comfortable turning away from this golf ball. And you do that by loosening your hips. Now, one of the things that's big with this is I wanna go ahead and push into the ground with my right foot. I wanna feel like my right leg is kind of pushing my right hip out of the way. That's the first key there. So when you set up this golf ball, feel like in your backswing, I'm doing this motion, almost kicking my hips open I'm almost, imagine you're driving a car. I've talked about kick the clutch with your left foot. Imagine the clutch was on the right side. Imagine instead of where the gas is, that was a clutch pedal. And I'm gonna kick that clutch in with my right foot. That's gonna rotate my hips in the backswing. Really get me loaded up better. Number two, I need to stay soft with the knees. If I'm rigid and tight and try to feel like everything is locked in here, now it's gonna make me be short in my swing. That's gonna get you quick. It's gonna kill your distance. I wanna feel like my, my knees can move a little bit here. I don't wanna be locked in with them. That's gonna allow my hips to rotate. So if I push with this right leg and I keep things loose, now I'm really rotating my lower body and it makes it much easier for my upper body to rotate in the backswing. Look how now my hands got higher and I don't really feel tight there. I feel like my hands are just kind of flowing back into that higher backswing position. That's the first key there. Let me go ahead and try one out, bigger swing really engaging that right leg in the backswing to clear the hips and staying nice and loose so everything rotates back. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, left center of the fairway. I know my swing speed was up. I'm guessing that's kind of high teens and a lot more distance. What'd it say there, Q? Actually 120 mile per hour and uh, 317 total distance on that one. Yeah, so I picked up a lot of yardage there when I let my body rotate a little bit more. That doesn't mean that you're gonna hit it 317 I can't promise you that, but I can promise you if you get rotated that way, the swing will smooth out. So that's leading up to the downswing. Let's talk about what's really gonna get you over the edge when you're in the downswing. Q, you, you were talking about this earlier. You had a really good tip for this. How do you recommend people start that transition? Right, so even if you're doing everything that Clay talks about where you're getting that big backswing, if you start that downswing with the push of the upper body, uh, you know, that's just gonna get things rushing in the downswing. So we really need to get our legs started uh, in the swing first, and then allow that pulling sensation in the downswing instead of that pushing sensation with the trail hand. So what you wanna feel that pull is actually in your left hand or your lead hand, and you wanna feel it in these first three fingers here. So if you hold it up like this, first three fingers, your pinky ring and middle finger, 
you really want to feel the pressure in the grip in that area of the hand and that's where you're putting the force into the handle you really want to feel like you're pulling it through instead of pushing it through with that trail hand you know we want to do that our trail hands most of us that's our dominant hand and that's where we get that rushing of the swing because we really want to push through and get that hit impulse and hit it but that's how you rush things you want to allow it to pull through and that's going to allow you to create that speed uh, in the downswing so if i'm doing that pushing action where do you think i would feel where do you where do you see players really feel that with their right side where they are trying to push and cast would it be in the hand the elbow the shoulder what do you kind of feel is like the main thing there? well yeah you're going to feel the shoulder coming out away from your body you know it's going to be that over the top motion uh, that we see oftentimes you're, you're gonna feel like your elbow is also coming out away from your body there. Yeah, that's a big one. Getting this, as soon as that elbow comes out, I mean, it's dead. It's definitely that pushing type casting right. motion. And the hand, the trail hand, you're gonna feel like it's more relaxed. And it's almost like it's gonna be pointing up to the sky at the top of the screen, so or at the top of the swing. You're almost gonna feel like you're a waiter holding a tray at the top here. And that's gonna allow you to relax that hand a little bit and allow you to pull with that lead hand so that you're not rushing so much in the downswing. Yeah, and when I do that pulling one, for me, I really feel like it's almost like on my left side of body. Yeah. You know, where would you say to focus in on, if you're if you're struggling getting that pulling action, you are dominant at the right side, what do you think is like a good trigger for that? Well, you want to feel the pressure in the ground. You want to feel like you're getting to your lead side, you're feeling that pressure in your lead foot, almost on the inside of your lead foot and in the heel. And that's going to allow you, you almost want to feel like you're pushing into the ground there. And that's what's triggering you and allowing you to pull that club in the downswing. because. If, you don't, if you're not feeling that pressure in that lead foot, you don't have anything really powering your lead arm. You're just kind of still thrusting with your uh, upper body, which would be better than pushing with your trail side, but to really have that power and to have that smooth looking, powerful swing, we really gotta get that lead leg pushing, almost just like what Clay talked about with your trail leg. He was talking about how you're pushing down and out to rotate your hips in the back swing. Up, yeah. you're, put, you're doing the same thing in the downswing. In the downswing, you wanna feel like you're pushing down and out away from you to rotate that hip open and get the body rotating and pulling through as opposed to what we see with people who rush the swing where they just come out and, and just throw everything at it with the trail side. Yeah, I like that a lot. So if you're doing this the wrong way, rushing the downswing, it's a lot of right arm, weight staying on the right side. Even if you try to pull from back here, you're kind of falling back and it's not gonna be a very good shot. So if, you were to, if I was to boil this down, I would say, let's get loaded up at the top of the swing then let's get a weight shift to the inside of the foot like you're talking right. about and then let the left side clear out of the way so let me go ahead and try to hit one right. doing that so my main swing keys here are make that big backswing if you don't have the big backswing it's impossible to be smooth doesn't matter what you do in the rest of your swing once i get that backswing where i'm freeing up the body loosening up then i'm going to shift to the left really before i feel like i'm starting down shift to the left then clear my left side of my body out of the way that's going to allow it to whip on through there let me go ahead and give that a whirl here on my flight scope and let's see if we can get a, a really big one here. I'm really gonna go after this. There we go. Left edge of the fairway. And I swung pretty hard on that one. That definitely felt like I didn't rush. I got up there, I shifted to the left, then I cleared everything out of the way. What I hit on that one, Q? Got up to 122 miles per hour, total distance 322. I'm not gonna do much better than that. So shift left, then rotate, that's gonna smooth out that downswing.